This verse is a thought about Shakespeare's Macbeth, reading through Macbeth this time around and thinking about the um, the images of, of babies and the possibility of Lady Macbeth having lost a child and uh, the relationship between Macbeth and Lady Macbeth. And in Act 3, Scene 1, when Macbeth is hiring the murderers, he makes a very interesting point. He says, um, I could with barefaced power sweep him from sight, Banquo. I could sweep him from sight and bid what my will about it, yet I must not, for certain friends that are both his and mine, whose loves I may not drop, but wail his fall, who I myself struck down. In other words, Macbeth is saying that if I were to kill Banquo myself, which I could do, certain friends of mine would wail that fact and look uh, unfortunately at me. You could read this line a couple of different ways. You could see it that, uh, on the one hand, Macbeth is cowardly. He doesn't want to kill Banquo himself, and so now that he's king, he doesn't have to get his hands dirty, and so he hires other people to do it. You could also say that he wants to make sure that he isn't found out for the killing of Banquo, because he might lose reputation. Uh, that's true, too. But it is intriguing, the, the ambiguity of the line, like a lot of ambiguity in Shakespeare's words, lends itself to another interesting read. The fact that he says, for certain friends that are both his and mine, whose loves and I may not drop. What friends does Macbeth have? <laughs> as, as one of my students pointed out, there, he has no friends. There's nobody that, that he's friends with. The closest person to him, the one who's most friendly to him, is actually Lady Macbeth. And that raises a question uh, that I think is very intriguing. Is it possible that when he talks about certain friends that are both his and mine, whose loves I may not drop, he's actually talking about Lady Macbeth? Is it possible that really the friend that he doesn't want to lose here is Lady Macbeth as a, a friend? And he'll lose her if she were to find out that he killed Banquo. But of course you'd have to ask, well, why would he lose her friendship if she found out that he killed Banquo? If we read it that Lady Macbeth perhaps had a love affair with Banquo before the play starts, that throws a new light on all sorts of different aspects of the play. Her reference, for instance, to having a child, but then losing the child. Is it possible that she had a child by Banquo? Is it possible that Macbeth found out? insisted she kill the child? Or could it be that she had a child by Banquo and that the child died and she and Macbeth were therefore spared the ignominy but nevertheless had this um, tension between them ever after? Is it possible that even Macbeth uh, himself uh, might have been accepting the child and then the child died and they thought it was the wrath of God upon them, possibly? Um, one way or the other, that explains the the strange affection that Lady Macbeth seems to exhibit towards Banquo during the majority of the play. And when she is exhibiting that affection, we've got to keep in mind that Banquo is, to a great degree, the good part of Macbeth. He is the, um, the conscience of Macbeth. So that her love for Banquo is like her love for the goodness of Macbeth. Uh, and she she says uh, at, uh, at one point that, that uh, she, Macbeth has to kill the goodness in him if he's going to really become king. He's too full of the milk of human kindness. And that's exactly what he does. He does kill the goodness in him. And then the killing of Banquo becomes sort of a uh, representation of the killing of the goodness in him. So that all that she loved in Macbeth uh, is killed at the moment of Banquo's kill. That sense is really brought out in some productions, like the James McAvoy modernization of it, for instance. But I really like that idea that, that maybe Lady Macbeth had this friendship, if nothing else, love affair possibly with Banquo, because it does put a whole new spin on a lot of the different lines that occur afterwards. The fact that, it, for instance, in Act 3, Scene 2, right away, Lady Macbeth comes on stage and says, is Banquo gone from court? She's immediately asking about him or that earlier when they are greeting Banquo before he leaves, and Lady Macbeth says, if Banquo had been forgotten, it had been a gap in our great feast and all things unbecoming, that without Banquo this whole party would be 
nothing. Uh, which again, you can read as sinister, as her sort of hoping that Banquo is there uh, and knowing that he's going to be killed. But she doesn't know. She doesn't know that Banquo is going to be killed. In the act that follows um, our scene with the murderers, Act 3, Scene 2, Macbeth says, Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck, until you applaud the deed. She doesn't know that Banquo is going to be killed. And if she was in love with Banquo, then when Banquo is killed, um, that would be a very fine reason for her to then begin to unravel and enter into madness, which she does. She enters into madness, she goes crazy, she sleepwalks and throws herself from the battlements uh, at, at, at the last. So, uh, I don't know, there's no, there's no confirmation of this one or the other, but it is an intriguing thought that perhaps Lady Macbeth is the friend or friends that bank that, that Macbeth cannot afford to lose and he would lose her if he killed Banquo or if she found out he killed Banquo because she's in love really with Banquo. Just a thought. Thought a worthy one.